Welcome back one more time with immigration lawyer extraordinaire Andy Semichuk from Pace Law Firm. Andy, time for the speed round. You ready? You bet. Let's go. Let's answer the questions from the people. Here we go. Number one, we had someone write in. Hi, do you know if the PNP process from Sydney will be faster than the old one? First of all, what's the PNP process from Sydney and will it be faster? Okay, that's the provincial nominee program, which is now centralized in Sydney, Nova Scotia. So your application goes there first, uh, as opposed to where it used to go, which was to the consulates or, you know, for processing. The answer is, in my view, that it's going to take longer, although in theory, Sydney is a processing center that's going to clean up everything and then just send the ultimate application to the relevant consulate for final approval. The reason why I think it's going to take longer is because, first of all, there's this transfer from Sydney to the consulate that takes a little extra time. And number two, uh, it's surprising how much bureaucracy is involved. And, you know, things in theory don't always work out in practice. Just from my own practical point of view over the years, I've found uh, I know the Americans do it that way. And uh, I, don't, I don't find it to be particularly uh more efficient so my, my sense is it'll take at least as much time and possibly a little longer great going backwards uh, <laughs> okay uh, number two it says here hi I'm 26 year old from India right now I'm working in Saudi Arabia as a system network engineer I have four years experience here do you have any vacancies for IT in Canada waiting for your reply okay Canada had a wonderful IT program which effectively was like a blanket LMO labor market opinion which was the first of two steps to get a work permit in Canada cleared. So as soon as you applied, if you fit into one of those IT categories, you were uh, that much uh, fur further ahead. All you have to do is apply for the work permit. Okay. Unfortunately, that program no longer is, exists. They've canceled that, which now means you have to take a two-step process. First step being the employer has to apply for a labor market opinion through Service Canada. That's taking about four months now, according to... John Burke from our office, who happens to be an expert in that particular area. Okay. And then there's the application overseas, which is taking several months. So unfortunately for our IT worker, two-step process, and the number one step is find someone who's going to offer you a job in Canada. Okay. To do that, Facebook, uh, Monster, Craigslist, uh, Kijiji, check around, see who's offering jobs, who's got uh, some need, and see if you can match up with them. Okay. Number three, I did not get approved. This is alphabet soup time here, so okay. you're going to have to help me out, Andy. Okay. Uh, I did not get approval from HRSDC since 13 months have passed. I have applied as a skilled worker under AEO federal visa. Could you tell me long how long I'll have to wait for approval? So, what's HRSDC? What's the AEO deal? Okay. And how long do they have to wait? Okay, HRSDC is Human Resources and Skills Development Canada. A sort of a short name for them is Service Canada. Okay. They're the ones that are step one in the two-step process of getting a work permit. Their job is to check to see are there any Canadian workers ready, willing, and able to take the particular job. The AEO is an arranged employment opinion. It's like a labor market opinion, but it's for a foreign worker overseas that an employer wants to sponsor for a full-time permanent job in Canada. A labor market opinion is for a temporary job in Canada. So this worker appears to have an employer who is ready to take this person on full time permanently. And that employer has filed an application with HRSDC Service Canada, but it appears to be delayed because it's over a year. So something's wrong. So this worker has got to get that application back into HRSDC or get the employer to send it in and say, hey, 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 it's over a year now something's wrong, uh, I need this worker, like, let's get going on this thing. Should, uh, that sounds like, so the, should they reapply the application or should they ask what happened to the original application? What I would do is I would copy the original application, send it back in and say, hey, hey, what's going on? You know, why is there such a delay here? Let's okay. get this thing moving. Okay, or you can always just talk to Andy. Oh, of course, yeah. He'll sort it out. Uh, number four, uh, my name is, and I'm 19 years old, I am studying preparatory psycho. After two years, I will be studying engineering. My parents are divorced, and I only live with my mother here in Tunisia. Besides, I really, really would like to finish my studies in Canada, and although I can't afford expenses of attending university in Canada, I'm sure I'll have a part-time job and save money. Uh, it goes on to say, basically what they're looking for is a scholarship in Canada, 
And if she can get that scholarship, can her mother come too? Hmm. Well, it's kind okay. of a long one, but so this is a student who wants to study in Canada, and to study in Canada, the problem is you have to pay the tuition and show that you've got enough money to be able to live in Canada while you're here. Mm -hmm. You can't be a student and apply to go to work right away while you're a student in Canada, because then you're not a student; you're a worker coming to Canada. Canada's laws are such that you have to come at least initially as someone who's going to be studying full time. We don't want part-time students with working. Uh, work permits because we have enough students as it is already looking for spots. Okay. So the answer to this guy is he's going to have to find first a college that will accept him that are that's reasonable in terms of costs, but he's got to find some uh, grant scholarship or some way of financing his ability to go through college. Again, Google scholarships, loans, student loans, grants and try and find someone who will uh, give them the money necessary in order to get the thing going. Another possible direction would be find an employer who would be interested in the skills that you have as a worker down the road once you finish your college and see if you can talk that employer to fund your way to go through the courses you need in order to get to the, the level of expertise that you need in order to work for this guy. Those and are my suggestions. As far as the mother's concerned. Yeah, what's the angle there? Because that's. Uh, the mother's got to come in on her own steam on some other basis. So, for example, work permit or perhaps, again, student if she could study or if she's got a relative here who could support uh, or, or sponsor her, that might be a way. But it's a hard sell. Again, uh, she's got to come in on her own terms. Okay. Is there an American angle they can play there with the U.S. or is it more or less the same kind of thing? Uh, sometimes you can go to the U.S. Uh, easier than you can come to Canada, so it depends on the person's education and qualifications. If they're at the bachelor's level or higher, but again, you're going to have to have an employer okay. in the U.S., so we're in the same boat. All right. Yeah. Uh, moving right along, let's go down to, no, I believe that was my last one, Andy. Yeah. 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 Um, so let's talk next time. We're going to cover some more PMP stuff, because I yes. promised some people I'd do some uh, provincial nomination program stuff. Okay. We'll cover that next week. How does yeah. that sound? Yeah, that's terrific. Awesome. A. Semichuk at PaceLawFirm.com with any other questions that you have. Or catch us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Bye for now.